All right, Nijner, so the next one we're going to take a look at here on this EKG is, again, let's start with the same process here. Rate. How do we determine rate? We got a rhythm strip. Let's go ahead and do it that way. So we're going to have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have 11 R waves. Multiply that by six. That gives me 66 beats per minute. Okay, now that here, here's one thing, one thing you really want to remember. This is the ventricular rate. Okay, this can sometimes confuse people um, where they assume that, oh, this rate is the atrial rate. No, this is the ventricular rate because we're tracking it off of the R waves. If I wanted to determine the atrial rate, I'd have to go from P wave. Um, I'd, I actually have to measure that distance, okay, from the P wave until you get to the next P wave. All right, so... We have a ventricular rate of about 66 beats per minute. So 66 beats per minute. Okay, next thing we gotta determine is the rhythm. All right, so we gotta determine the rhythm. R to R interval, is it the same? I can already tell just by looking at this thing that it is not. Here's why. Look at these two right here. I can already just like, man, this is like an, a super obvious one. Let's count from this one. This is about a half a box. One, two, three, about a half. All right, so we can say it's about four boxes. Okay, now track that in comparison to this guy. This is about a half a box, one, two, and like a quarter of one. This is definitely not the same. And then if you compare over here, here's one, two, three, four, five boxes. Over here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. This is nowhere near irregular. Uh, so this is what I was telling you guys. If you look at this and just kind of step back, look at your rhythm strip, you don't have to count every single box. You should be able to kind of tell just by looking at it that this is definitely not a regular EKG. This is irregular. So this is definitely a irregular. Ah. So this is definitely an irregular rhythm. And remember what I told you guys, usually if it is irregular, it's almost always AFib. There might be some rare cases where it's like, you know, there's other things like multifocal atrial tachycardia, and maybe again, an ectopic rhythm with like some aberrant conduction, like a, you know, PACs and PVCs, but usually it's AFib most commonly. And again, we'll determine how we know that. All right. Here's something I want you to remember though. When we talk about rates as we go up, we said that 60 to 100 beats per minute is normal. As we go and we go from like 100 to 150, this is usually what we consider to be like tachycardia, like sinus tach. This is usually like a sinus tach. As we go up like 150 to 250, this is more of like your SVTs, your supraventricular tachycardias. And then as we go from 250 to 350, this is usually like your flutters. Okay, so atrial flutter, ventricular flutter. And as we go up even more than that, 350 to 450, this is usually fibrillation. And again, this could be atrial fibrillation or ventricular fibrillation. So again, make sure that we remember this is atrial, could be atrial flutter, or it could be ventricular flutter, which some textbooks don't even really consider, uh, some uh, clinicians don't even really consider ventricular flutter to be that much of a rhythm anymore because usually ventricular flutter almost always progresses into ventricular fibrillation. And then fibrillation, again, this could be atrial or this could be ventricular fibrillation. So these are the rates. So in other words, the ventricular fibrillation rate is 350 to 450. Atrial fibrillation rate is 350 to 450. So that's something also to remember. Okay, let's take a look at that P wave now. Next thing we gotta do is go to lead two. Well, if I look in lead two, I'm supposed to find a P wave. And this is really hard to determine if this is even a P wave or not. I'm looking here and I don't even really think I can define, like this might be a P wave, but it's definitely a little difficult to tell in lead two. Let's go to AVR. Again, I'm over here and I have my QRS complex and I'm not sure, is this an inverted P wave or not? It's really difficult to tell. Let me go over to the other one, see if I can find anything different on this one. All I see is these like waves, like these, these look like little fibrillatory waves, kind of giving you guys a hint here. So I don't really see a P wave. I don't, it's kind of like no P wave here. There's definitely no distinguishable P wave is what I really want us to think. When you have no distinguishable P wave, the next thing I want you to do is go straight to V1. When you go to V1, 
usually in between the QRS complexes, you get like these little squiggly lines. If I see squiggly lines, especially these guys, ooh, these are characteristic. If I see like these little squiggly lines in V1, in between my QRS complexes, and I got an irregular rhythm here, oh my gosh, I'm leaning towards AFib. So again, no P wave, go straight to V1. If I have fibrillatory waves, that's what they call them, little fibrillatory waves in V1. Another one that you can look at is also lead two. These are the main ones that I look at for AFib, is you go to V1, and if you see these little squiggly lines in V1, that's AFib. If I go over here to lead two, and look, I see all these like squiggly lines here, Oh my gosh, look at that. That's so characteristic of AFib. So again, that's what I'm going to go with here. So far, this is AFib. But we got to continue to go through our, our process here. Is every P wave followed by a QRS complex? It's really hard to tell because we don't really know if this is, this is actually going to be a P wave. So we definitely can't really say that there is complete AV uh, association. So in other words, there might be some AV disassociation here. All right, that's important. QRS complex, is these suckers wide or are they narrow? All right, well again, I just gotta go to one of these points here and find where I can have a, uh, again, let's go here to this point here. And we're gonna go to this one right here. And that's about two boxes. This is definitely a narrow QRS complex. Times when it would be wide as if there was like a, an aberrant conduction down the bundle branch system. But that's definitely what we're gonna go with here. So, I have narrow QRS complexes, I have fibrillatory waves in V1 and 2, no P wave, an irregular rhythm, this has got to be AFib. This is definitely what it is. This is definitely atrial fibrillation. Now remember, what did we tell you? Atrial fibrillation is actually going to be having an atrial rate between 350 to 450. How would I determine that? I'd have to go to one of these uh, little fibrillatory waves and try to measure the distance between this fibrillatory wave and this fibrillatory wave. And that's one box, guys. One box is what? 300 beats per minute. It's pretty darn fast. And it might be actually a little bit faster than that because it's less than one box. And again, remember, this is irregular. So we're saying about 350 to 450 beats per minute is what we consider to be atrial fibrillation. It could be pretty darn close to that because again, it's not, it's a little bit less than a box. So there's atrial fibrillation. That's how we determine that, okay? Let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's move on to our next EKG. So what we're gonna determine is the rate. How do we look at, how are we gonna do that? Let's take this 10 second rhythm strip here and we're gonna basically add up all of these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So that's about 25 R waves. Multiply that by six, that's about 150 beats per minute, right? So, that is the ventricular rate. That is pretty fast, man. You know, so that's pretty fast. So that's your ventricular rate. Next one, let's come up here and just compare this one just for kicks, right? So again, we're going to be looking here. This is a six second strip. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven R waves multiplied by 10 is 70 beats per minute. And again, that is your ventricular rate. All right, so we have 150 beats per minute, right? If you guys wanna be, you know, again, just go ahead and look, look, look right there, R wave. All right, there's our R wave. It's about two boxes. So if we have two boxes, what do we say? We take 300, which is one box, right? And we're gonna, we have two total boxes here. That's 150 beats per minute. So again, these are pretty comparable. So our rate is 150 beats per minute. Now what do, we, what do we do? We take the R to R interval and see if it's about the same. So if I'm looking at this one, it's about one, two boxes, one, two boxes, one, two boxes. It's it, looking at it, kind of just taking a look at this, this is definitely regular. It's definitely about every two boxes between each R wave. It's pretty darn consistent because they're pretty much falling right on these box lines here. Yeah, this is definitely a nice regular rhythm here. So if we look at the R to R interval, this is definitely regular. All right, cool. 
what do we do next guys we go and we say okay let's look at the p wave in lead two it has to be upright Ooh, i don't know where the heck the p wave even is in this thing i have I'm having a hard time determining is this the p wave or but it just doesn't look normal right it might be a p wave it's really hard to ter determine based on this so i'm going to say right now i'm not quite sure if that's a p wave or not it doesn't look like your characteristic p wave if anything it's kind of like really pointed and i don't like that so it's kind of pointed up or up like that kind of like sawtooth in nature which makes me wonder if this really is a p wave well let's go over here to avr it's supposed to be inverted i don't even really kind of see a p wave in here so again, I don't really see a P wave in my AVR. Here's what I want you guys to remember. Okay, I don't really see a P wave. So what did I tell you guys to do when you don't see a P wave? No P wave, go to V1, okay? Or look at lead two. And let's see what we can find. So in lead two, remember I told you we have these like spiky parts here. They kind of look like sawtooth. Let's go V1. What the heck is this thing right here? It's weird. It's kind of like a little sawtooth that I have here from each one. So I have a, this sawtooth-like structure, then a QRS complex. A sawtooth-like structure, a QRS complex. Huh, that's interesting. I look over here in two in the same thing. I got this sawtooth and a QRS complex. Sometimes I might look at three and AVF if two looks a little odd. And again, I got this sawtooth and a QRS complex. AVF, sawtooth. Huh. Here's what I want you to remember. Anytime you see a P wave that kind of looks like a sawtooth, that should make you clue into the fact that this might be atrial flutter. Now, here's let's go to this rhythm strip over here and look at look at this one. This one's a little bit interesting. Look at this. I got kind of a sawtooth, a sawtooth, a sawtooth. So there's three of these sawtooths for every one QRS complex. Then I come over here and I got one sawtooth. Then I go back over here and I got three sawtooth waves. Oh. So it's three sawtooth, one sawtooth wave. This is a three to one. So three of these sawtooth waves are these F waves we're gonna call lead to a QRS complex. So that's a three to one. Then we have a one to one. So for every one F wave, there's a QRS complex. Well, that's kind of what I have here. I have one F wave, then a QRS complex. F wave, QRS complex. So this is an atrial flutter with a ratio that's one to one. And again, what does that mean? That means for every uh, atrial depolarization, for every atrial depolarization, there is a correlating a ventricular depolarization. So that's important. If you take that rhythm strip on the side though, that was a three to one. So that means for every three atrial depolarizations, there's only one QRS depolarization. That means that there's actually AV disassociation in this three to one because not all of the, these actual F waves, which we're not gonna call them P waves because again, they're called flutter waves. So we don't technically call them P waves. They are, but they're just abnormal P waves is a better way of saying them. So we call them F waves, flutter waves. So with this example here, this would be AV disassociation, but this one isn't. This one is actually going to the AV node and it's getting conducted down the bundle branch system and causing a QRS complex. And this is what we have. We have a one to one. So there is AV association in this one. That's good. So there's no blocks. That's good. Now we go to the QRS complexes. QRS complexes, they look good. They don't look too wide. They're not, I don't see any of them so far that are greater than uh, three boxes. They're all looking like they're about, you know, less than three boxes. So I'd say my QRS complexes are nice and narrow. And again, just take a look at them. They're not hard to recognize a wide QRS. So I'd say that this is a narrow Okay, QRS complex. So if I have a narrow QRS complex, I have a fast heart rate, it's regular. Remember what I told you, regular, narrow QRS complexes and tacky, three things, atrial flutter, sinus tack, SVT. How do we determine atrial flutter? We look for those sawtooth waves. We call them F waves, they're abnormal P waves. What's the best place to look for them? Look at them in V1, you can also look at them in lead two and also three and AVF. So that's something that you look for. There's typical atrial flutter, which is the most common type that we have, a flutter. What you can look for is within V1, usually the sawtooth waves are upright and lead one. Okay, V1, sorry. 
and usually their kind of sawtooth is pointing downwards usually in two, three, and AVF. And this is usually your typical atrial flutter. And if you look over here in two, it's kind of pointing down there, pointing down. Again, you're going to have this pointing down, pointing down. So this is actually typical atrial flutter because this is pointing upwards in V1. Okay, so this is actually definitely an example of typical atrial flutter. And again, if you wanted to calculate the atrial rate, again, this one's going really fast because, again, for every beat that is occurring within the atria, it's actually going to be moving down into the ventricles. So this one's moving pretty fast. All right. So we got our rate. We definitely know that this is atrial flutter, typical atrial flutter with a one to one ratio. All right. But again, remember that they can occur in multiple types. The most common ratio for atrial flutter is two to one. So for every two atrial beats, that's going to cause one ventricular beat or two atrial depolarizations, one ventricular depolarization. All right. Let's go ahead and move on from atrial flutter to the next EKG. All right, engineers, so in this video, we talked about how to determine the rate and how to interpret the rhythm of an EKG for atrial fibrillation and also atrial flutter. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to determine the rate and interpret the rhythm for EKGs for SVT and also Wolf-Parkinson's-White syndrome. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. If you guys also get a chance, please go check out our Facebook, our Instagram, even our Patreon account. If you guys can donate, we would truly appreciate it. As always, Ninja Nerds, until next time.